my brethren, I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. Can you hear me well? We are on the month of intercession for the pastors. And Pastor Renito asked me to defend the class today. <laughs> Speak with the brethren a, a little bit about ministry. So let us open our Bibles in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. First, actually, Second Corinthians, chapter eleven. The brethren that can stand up, we are going to read the Bible in reverence to the reading of the Word of the Lord. I want to read with the brethren. From verse twenty-three to twenty-eight. If, if if you if you don't improve the feedback, I'm going to begin shouting here. Second Corinthians eleven, twenty-three. From twenty-three to twenty-eight. Let's go. Second Corinthians eleven twenty-three. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From, from the Jews, five times I received forty stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern of all the churches. The church may be seated. Do, has anyone that want to be a uh, pastor here after we read, read this text but still Paul says one thing that is glorious who wishes to be a pastor excellent things he desires in spite of all this that we just read so let us speak a little bit about what is ministry can you do it here in the projection what is the ministry in the work? A little different than we usually see normally. What work, how the ministry works outside of our church. Ministry in a church, evangelical church, a traditional church, for example, where I came from. And I believe that a few brethren also came from tradition. Who came from a traditional church? You can raise your hand without any shame because it's a blessing that we received from childhood. That was either Pentecostal or traditional. I was raised in uh, gospel, but I, I became a Christian when, eight, uh, when I turned 18. But I was raised in biblical, biblical school. I learned in verses and it was very useful to me. But, uh, and so I believe that traditional Pentecostal church they operated greatly with the gospel in our country and here as well, I'm sure. And from here, the missionaries came from from. Scotland, from England, the New England, that region of Boston, from the United States. Many missionaries went to Brazil, and we are very thankful to them. But what happens with the traditional church is that they don't believe in the spiritual gifts. They are sensationists. They are not sensationalists. No, that sensationalists, they, 
they cease, meaning cease, because they don't believe that the spiritual gifts happen after the institution, the sacred canon. So then when, when what pr perfect comes and what is in part will be annihilated, so then they believe that once the Bible was finished with the Old Testament, the spiritual gift stopped. But we don't believe this. We believe that what is perfect is the Lord Jesus. So when Jesus was perfect in the rapture, then the, the spiritual gifts are going to stop. Amen. But not today. We believe today the spiritual gifts. We just uh, heard a prayer in favor of the spiritual gifts for the Sabbath tonight, and we need to pray for this. So we believe. So how is the ministry in the other churches? We need to study, go to a theologian course. It's probably normally four years. Today, this theologian course is like a profession. The Ministry of Education and Culture in Brazil said this as a profession. So in Brazil, we need to, in order to be a, a pastor, you need to have a diploma of theology recognized by the government. So many churches adopt this. It's not our case. The ministry in the work of the Lord is different. We know that the ministry in the work of the Lord is is a lay ministry. You don't need a diploma in order to be a pastor. So how does the Lord do? The Lord begins to manifest characteristics of ministries on the usher. This is a, a detail, important detail. Here in the United States, I've seen a little bit of this, but in Brazil, there is an avalanche of new churches that are called new Pentecostal. And in those churches, they adopt the feminine ministry. And in the Bible, see, we all know this, it's unnecessary to speak about the importance of the sisters in the church. Do we need to say this? It's not necessary. They are teachers of Sunday school. They take care of a very important part of our church. They have a special service for them. The Lord set aside a service for the women. We don't have a service specific for the youth. Still not. But I believe that soon, Saturday, Saturday, we may have the pastors here who are here. We need to have, uh, I don't know when, but we, we need to have a service for the youth, not only to praise the Lamb of the Lord, but also to preach as it's been in our church. Take care of the service in the same way that the women are taking care of their, their service. So the women have a very important function in the church. And normally, churches have more women than men. But the Bible leaves it very clear that the, the ministry, apostolic ministry of the, the primitive church, as well as the ministry in itself, the, uh, the being apostle, evangelist, pastor, this is a vocation for the men. Anything that we try to force and try to do this is not going to work out. Because it's biblical. It's, it has a biblical basis. In the way, in same way that there are characteristic women that it's not right if men does. Today there is a feminist movement that try to achieve equality in everything. But there are things that doesn't work out. There are things that are things of women. And there are things that are only men. It's very clear for us. There is no argument about this. But I just want to leave it clear to the bread that there are many fewer pastors and they pick up the biblical example to justify this, which is a completely flawed example, which is not sustained biblically in any analysis, which is picking up Deborah as a pastor because there is different. Deborah had a profession of a pastor. She didn't take care of sheep men. She took care of sheep animals, irrational animals. So I want it to be made clear. Uh, the women that want to be pastors, this is bad news for you. So let's proceed. How's the ministry on the work? The example is there in David. No, you can be a pastor. There is no problem here. Pay attention. What is ministry? What is the example of David? He was taken out from the flock. He was... Uh, a pastor, uh, uh, he was a shepherd of his profession, profession, and he was taking care of the sheep of his father, and that God used this character for him to take care of sheep of men. There's another example of uh, uh, another example of a man who was a shepherd of sheep, and 
want to take care of a multitude. The other example is Moses, right? Moses got his wife. He got his wife, an effective life. And the youth like this, the first thing, right? So then he got a profession. He was, he did all, a lot of things, but then he, he got a job. He got a professional life. He began to work with, with his father-in-law. And then his spiritual life, he stayed 40 years in the desert to, be, you know, to learn how to be a human being. So then when he learned how to be a human being, he went to take care of uh, sheep men for 40 more years. He walked in the desert with the Jewish people. So the minister in the work follows what the Bible says. We have been chosen by the Lord. And the pastor has to have a few characteristics. Uh, uh, until 11.15, 11.30, I don't think I'm going to last this long. So what is a ministry for you? Let's go. Is, is it a title? Pastor, some church call it a reverend. Because it's a way for you to refer to a religious authority, of ecclesiastic authority. Mr. Reverend, such and such person. So, like, for example, you can begin calling Pastor Renudo like that, Mrs. Mr. Reverend Pastor Renudo. We don't use this. It's not a title for us. Isn't it true? Is this a position? Pastor Renudo is at the door as a deacon. Now he's on the pulpit. Is that a position? Was he promoted from deacon to pastor? I didn't have this privilege of being a deacon. Sadly, so sometimes I stay at the door just to see how it is. <laughs> but when they ask me to do the more difficult things, I ask for help. Is that a position? Yes. Is a deacon less than a pastor? No. He may have less responsibility, but it's not hier hierarchical situation. It is something to be an uh, individual uh, point of... Uh, uh, a highlight in your life is it objective to be achieved and, uh, it's not an objective for you to pursue it's not a career that you need to you need to do all things politically in order for you to be uh, observed in order to be promoted like, like if you are in a, a business where you need to achieve your targets and you work with excellence in your human targets. Of course, there are spiritual targets that need to be achieved, but not, not human targets. This is not the objective. So let's continue. So what is ministry? Just show all of them. Ministry is a blessing from God, from man. It's a choice. There are people that don't want. I know of pastors that have been called, but they told in their hearts, I don't want to be a pastor, but God called me. I don't know if that was your case. I wanted. You wanted as well, right? Sabado. Sabado didn't want it. You see? I found one. But there are many pastors that today say this truly. He was a little red. Uh, he blushed a little, but that's how it is. There are people that don't like it, but all of a sudden do, the Lord called. But it's a blessing for the life of men. Isn't that Sabbath? Isn't that Renudo? It's a blessing for us. When I became a Christian, actually before becoming a Christian, the youth, you would go to my house and I, you don't want to go back to the church. I was a little petulant. I would say, I'm not going to go back to that church. It was another church that didn't have spiritual gift. When I really become a Christian, I'm going to go to another church. I didn't even know that existed Maranatha. So then I became Maranatha in, in a renovation in another church. And that's and afterwards the Lord called me to Maranatha. And I desired this. 
So in the first meeting of the presbytery that happened, I put a little suit. Man, maybe they, they will call me to be a pastor. And they called me. Glory to God. Things of the Holy Spirit for that time. The Lord knew at the time. Today, the requirements, uh, the requirements for people to become pastors, uh, they were required of others because if the requirements today to become a pastor are very demanding. But uh, I had nine months of church, Maranatha Church. Of course, I studied Bible. I went to a seminar and all this, but nine months of work of the Holy Spirit, with 20, between 23 and 24 years of age, I was just married. But today, it would not happen. But this is a blessing of God. It's, it's a noble thing. It's a noble thing. To become a pastor is something amazing. It's a wonderful thing. And I said, so after reading a text like this, you shake and you say, man, stoned three times shipwreck a night I, I stayed in deep danger of being robbed at the end of verse 33 even said that he was was let down a, not a basket uh, and a wall city wall but even so those that desire to be pastor is an excellent thing so ministry is being an instrument is to be prepared to suffer when the Lord called Paul is said to Ananias an interesting thing Ananias go because this is for me an instrument cho chosen but there's a little complimentary phrase do you remember and I'll show you how important it is to suffer for my name so ministry this blessing of pulpit it's a wonderful thing that we have to get up to a pulpit and preach in the word of the Lord. But outside of the pulpit, what we go through, of course, it doesn't compare what Paul went through. I believe that this is a model of the ministry of the Lord Jesus first and then of the apostles of the primitive church. It does not compare to our trials today. So now you can go to the next slide. The ministry of Paul, how did it go? You can show all of the points. So let's read with me. Three times he was uh, beaten with rods and at the time being beaten up, no, there was no human right at that time. There's no this movement, this organization. They, they were really beaten up. One time I was stoned. The Jewish people, they knew how to stone people. It was a specialty of the Jewish people. They know to this day. <laughs> They're good at aiming. Even when, when Jesus, when the adulterous woman was caught in adultery, Jesus said, who has no sin, be the first. And the guy had already a stone on his hand and thought, oh, the first one is not with me, but the second, yeah, leave it with me. I'll hit it. I, I will hit another target. I'm, uh, target. I'm not going to miss it. But in order to have the second, that needed needed to be the first. And then, you know what happened? They began leaving this the rocks there and and left. But Paul was left as dead. So stony was not giving a little stone. They they made a, a mountain of stones on top of the person. It was death sentence at that time. So you see this list, you, you, you think it's a list of the criminal. So what was the crime of Paul? What was his crime? Preaching the word, preaching the gospel. But he was known as the, the one who was the opposer to the religion, the, the Jewish religion. So what happened today? We, we preached the, the gospel. Paul preached the word. But Paul preached Jesus alive. He said, Jesus died and resurrected. We also preach this. We preach that Jesus died and resurrected, and he will come back. And we believe in this revealed word. And many times, and so many times, we are considered 
opposed to the word. And what do we preach? We preach that word is alive, it's not dead, it's not frozen, a theology that has already passed five, 500 years ago, which was the theolo theology of Reformation. was very important, but was important for the time. But this theology that was rediscovered, the religious Reformation, was very important for us because it made the church go back to the path we celebrated last year. 1517 to 2017, 500 years of Reformation, Martin Luther. But that theology, we cannot keep looking back 500 years ago. No, the Bible is dynamic. It's the same word written, but the Holy Spirit never stopped talking. The Holy Spirit didn't become mute 500 years ago. But everything inside of the doctrine of the Word, do we believe in the revealed Word? Amen? We believe. Hallelujah for this. Uh, it would be ter terrible for us if we remain, remained on a frozen theology, a dead Bible, but the Lord has given us a living doctrine, which is the Word of the Lord, a living Word that feeds our soul. So you see, it looks like a list of a condemned. He was stoned, he didn't die. He was beaten up and didn't die. Three times he was in a shipwreck and didn't die. One night and day he was under a beast. There's another slide that shows more things. In trips, many times, in peril of rivers, in peril of uh, robbers. Paul lived in the period, historic period of uh, Roman peace because the Romans built the roads and to control the, the cities, the, the Greece. The robbers diminished greatly, which because the, there were pirates on the sea that would rob the sheep. But even so, there were many robbers, and Paul suffered on, by the hands of the robbers in the pier, in danger in the city, in the desert, in the sea. This is a danger as well. Maybe even more difficult, which is a danger with um, false brethren. Of course, the Holy Spirit gives the sermon, but the pastor sometimes has a heart of pastor. The heart of pastor towards the sheep, the first thing that he sees, he looks with uh, an eye of compassion. And many times we are disappointed with the false brethren. But this is part of our ministry. So let us continue. We can show and work of the tire some work and vigils many times and, and Famine and hunger and thirst and go next. So now, what is, does the pastor, pastor have to do? What that's the main characteristic is to learn to listen. The ministry on on the work of the Holy Spirit is a lay ministry. So the majority of the pastors they have their work, their secular work, and they have. They leave, they donate their free time to the church. So it's a volunteer ministry. So many times a pastor doesn't have much time. He has to take care of the entire flock. He doesn't have a lot of time to listen to. But this is the characteristic that us pastors need to have. Our, us pastors need to have. We need to be able to listen. Somebody said that the ear of the pastor, the ear of the pastor is medication. Have you heard this word? Ear the pastor is a medication. So I don't want to take a little piece of the ear, of course. So in the sense of the pastor sitting down and listening, sometimes the pastor doesn't have patience. Sometimes the person does a uh, revelation, a revelation of the pastor. No. They say, pastor, I want to say that not only the women want to speak, Normally, women speak more because they want to release their anguish. They don't have anybody to speak with. And the pastor has to sit down and listen and listen and listen. And while we're listening, we have a secret. What we will we say afterwards? What do the brethren think? How do we know what to say afterwards? When you're listening, sometimes we don't know. Lord, how am I going to get out of this? What now, Lord? You could come while this woman is talking. <laughs> you 
because sometimes there's no solution. And maybe I will consult the presbytery. I'll call someone. Somebody's going to call me urgently before she, she finishes the conversation. But we have a secret. The secret is the one who called us. He gave us the means for this work. So while the brother and sister is saying, you're pleading, Lord, I need a revelation. Have mercy of me, this poor and needy man who I am. So then the re revelation comes, and then you can say, you can continue talking. Now I'm comfortable. And that's how it is. No, but the, the pastor has such a wisdom. Not. It all, it all comes from the Holy Spirit. So that's what the one that called us, he's the one who gives the means to do the work of the Lord. So be able to listen is, is a secret. Be impartial. It's another thing. Pastor needs to separate those things. Normally, it's natural in a relationship for you to do better with one type of a person than with another. But spiritually speaking, in the sense of solving a, a problem, the pastor has to be impartial. The pastor, the pastor is partial once, only once he loses credibility with the church. If he is partial, the, the sheep does, doesn't no longer have uh, tr confidence to bring the problem to the pastor. So we need to pray to the Lord so the Lord may give us wisdom of Solomon in the same way that he judged those women. Those women. One wanted uh, a child alive and the other because the other was dead. So the Lord needs to be the wisdom of the Spirit. So being meek. Do you know who you, who you were speaking with? Do you know who you were speaking with? Yes, Pastor, you are speaking with you. You need to be humble. And this humbleness is not an apparent humbleness, humility. It has to be something that the Holy Spirit works in our heart. And when the pastor makes a mistake, oh, the past pastor never makes mistakes, of course. We make and make great mistakes. Sometimes you give a harsh word to the sheep and the sheep was not ready for it. The sheep goes home and the, the sheep said, oh, I'm going to change churches. This pastor is rude and it's, yeah, everything is probably right, this person saying. But the person is not going to leave the church. What do we need to do? When you do this, the Holy Spirit doesn't let us sleep. Isn't it true? I don't sleep. I keep walking around, wandering. And I keep thinking, how am I going to fix this up? No, I'm going to say this. No, no, no. No, I'm going to do a visit. I'm going to call. No, no, I'm going to go personally. But we need to do this. When we make mistakes, we need to fix our problems. And be a loving. We had a period in the beginning of the church. And we're completing 50 years. Pastor Sabado reminded us of this. I've been in the work for more than 40 years. It was very rigid in the past. The pastor, there were pastors that when you enter in the church, the pastor is there. You even measured your steps, you know, not to make uh, too much noise because you were afraid of the pastor. The pastor imposed uh, fear. So the pastor, I need to speak with, with you at the end of the service. And the person is, oh, shaken. The pastor wants to speak with me. But this has changed. Glory to God. The ministry today is more loving. He hears more and ponders more in the disciplination. It's, it remains rigorous. The word has its rigor. Thank, to God, thank God because it's not a rigor that comes from us. A rigor comes from the Holy Spirit because the work of His is not ours. So now the, the gates are open. No, it's not it. But the wisdom maturity in the caring of the flock makes us be more loving. Pastor is a loving person. So there were a hundred sh sheep. No one ran away. Oh, leave this one on the desert. I'm going to keep with the nine nine. This is not your place. No. That's not the pastor do the pastor leave the nine nine safe in the desert and goes after the one. Go on deliver it from the danger for the bear or lion and deliver the sheep. That's our function. The pastor needs to visit. 
a visit, when we visit, you see what is inside of the house of the sheep. The service, you transform the house of the sheep into a temple of adoration. And there you extract wonderful things. You can be sure of it. And the fog comes much closer to the past when the, when the sheep is visited. When I came to one of those church, there was a, a sheep that had already left, problems that I had had. Hey, I don't want to go anymore. Anyone knew why that person had left the church? Out of the, uh, the husband and the children and the pastors, you know, she doesn't want to go anymore. She's going to another church. She got upset with our church. And I said, no, I'm going there. I went once. And I said, I knew pastor of the church. And hey, hey it's a pleasure. She treated me a little dry. So I said, no, okay. Early dawn, prayer, intercession group. I'm going to pray for this, this servant. And pray, and pray, and pray. I want to go there once again. Is it true, Pastor? What do you want to do? No, I'm going to visit you. Once again, okay. So on the second visit, I made a little cake. <laughs> made a little cake, a, a corn, a carrot cake with chocolate. Mm, very nice cake. Getting better. So sister, let's go to the church. And she, I, I'm going to, what is the problem? No, no, I, no, she didn't say. She never said to anyone. She's not going to say it to me. So I, a, long, a, a while longer, so tell your mother that I'm going to go there once again. Yes, Pastor, but no, I'm going to go visit her once again, three times. So, Pastor, she said the following. She said uh, she to have an afternoon snack there because she's going to make uh, cheese bread there. Oh, it was a great celebration, three times. Sister, let's go back to the church. And we have a, a meeting with the ushers and she she parked her car on the parking lot on the back and the sister is there no no she came to bring uh, a tray of cake to the pastor not to the pastor but for all the pastors that were there but that's great so tell her tell her that this week i'm going to go to her house once again yes pastor yes four times on the fifth time she came back to the church she's very they are study, glorifying the Lord, happy. To this day, I don't know why she left. But I know that she came back because she was cared by the church. I, and I didn't go by myself. I, I brought Ruth with me. I sometimes I, I get a, uh, not on the first visitation, but would, I would take a little group with me and would go to make a service and pray the Lord, praise to the Lord. Pastor, we need to take care of the sheep until the sheep chose out of that, that house but the love for the sheep needs to be manifested I'm just giving you an example I know the pastor here have examples that even better than this one not to be bitter oh she spoke ill of me oh he spoke ill of me oh we're going to have a, we're going to speak of pulp I'm going to I'm going to speak on the pulp against him Pastor going to go to the house and pray. I'm going to pray for those that curse me because we we hear people they speak you you love us. We exposed, but we should not be bitter about it. What the final consideration the pastor has to take care of the sheep, give assistance to the sheep, cry with the sheep. There are topics that no one can know. I have topics that I know in my heart I can never tell anyone, even to another pastor. Why? Because the sheep asked me to keep as, as it as a secret. So I cannot say the secret is a secret. Oh, pastor, I need the, the pastor to pray for me and give a system, but keep the secret and don't tell it to anyone. To, any, to no one? It's to no one. So you're going to assist, you're going to pray. Well, it's not going to put intercession group to pray? Yes, but we are going to open up to the, the group. Because the sheep has to trust in the pastor. If it is in the ear of the pastor, it's the pastor. It's not going to take the, to the children, to the wife, or to the mother, uncle, grandchildren. No. Cry with the sheep. 
sometimes those are topics that no one can know. Nobody has the anointing or outside of other pastors, but sometimes it's a local situation. You have to cry. You have to go to early dawn. Oh, Pastor, I, I cannot come to early dawn. So you wake up at home and you pray there and I will pray here. We're going to pray together. We're going to overcome together. In one of my church, there were family there. She had a cancer. Terrible. And she said, Pastor, I need your prayers. In Brazil, they're waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning. My time here and there, sometimes it was three times earlier. It was difficult. And then two and, two and one because of summertime. But they were praying. And we were praying here. And we got together on this prayer. And then she went to an exam recently. And she is cured. So see, the parents needs to cry with the sheep. He needs to feel what the sheep feels. What else? Keep the secret, I already said. You have to be heavy to anyone. It's not our case here, but there, in Brazil, there it's a lot of this. The brethren, know. a pastor that takes advantage of a deacon, is more. It's a well better, a well off. You know, take advantage of the deacon. It's, it's not good. What else? So the ministry is lay. There is no perfect ministry. So the brand will look at us here. We see many flaws. You see the other pastor, all the all the other pastors. We have many mis flaws. That's why you have an entire month to pray for us, so you can diminish the number of uh, flaws, so we can take care of you. So there is another topic I want to um, add. I think it's okay, right? So let's open. First Corinthians four. So First Corinthians four. Is there anything the the brand want to ask regarding what we already spoke? I'm afraid of this class. It's dangerous. First Corinthians four. One and two. That's a word that I gave to the ushers here. And early in the morning, I was speaking with Pastor Renewed and decided to bring it to the brethren once again. Sometimes the word in the orig biblical original gives us uh, more a life meaning to what the scriptures want to say to us. That's the case. So, 1 Corinthians 4 1 and 2. Let us read with me. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the ministries of God, the, the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. This is a word more for the pastor, but so just so the brethren can understand this expression, ministers of Christ. has uh, an interesting meaning. And let's begin with uh, stewards of the mysteries. The steward is the one that is the administrator of, of the home. Oikonomos is the original word, which even makes us think about economy, or s something related to administration, exactly what the steward is. Well, like our stewards, of, of the pastor is like the steward. The steward takes care of what is not his. In the original meaning of, of the word, it was the, the one who was the responsible for the farm or the house. So he took care of, of the money that entered and the money that went out. The pastor also takes care of it. He analyzes the treasure of the church. He knows who were the ones who uh, tied, who was to, to, to give off and what was spent on uh, cleaning up and uh, the rent sometimes and electricity. The pastor needs to know this. He administers all this. Not just going up and preaching and get out. No. The pastor needs to be an administrator. He took care also of the, the meal of the small children on, in the farm. You see, the pastor takes care of it. The pastor needs to know what is being taught to the children in this class and the mother of the children 
where they're going, what is going to be done, if there is security, if it's not, what is being given to the youth, what is church is receiving, if he goes on a trip, who is going to preach, what he preached, what was the result. So he's an administrator. But we are not owners, that's different. We we'll begin to be owners of the church. You know what the Holy Spirit does? He takes us from that church. It's interesting. You begin to become like the owner of the church and that church, and then all of a sudden, the Lord said, your ministry is, is over here, now we need to go to another church, and then, so you take, take your, from the, you try to get out of the position of a steward and, be, and try to become an owner. You are not owners, you are just stewards. We take care of the, the food, the administration, the money that enters, the expenses, that's the original text speaks to us, so the administrator, the supervisor. Very well. And also, the minister, the word minister is very interesting, because the Bible uses three words for this expression. In fact, he said the following, let's consider us as servants of Christ, minister of the Christ, depending on the translation. In the English version, is servants, is slave. No, New King James. New King James. L let a man so consider us a servant of Christ and stewards of the ministry of God. In this version, it is servant. It's servant because the Bible says three times about this expression of the servant. There are three words in the Greek that says the following. The first one says deacon. What are deacons? Who are deacons here? Wayne? Who else? Marcus. He's there on the back. Is slave. Hey, pastor. Uh -huh. Oh, now I'm going to take care of them. But pastors, we are also slaves. And here, it's for us. This message is for us. We are slaves, servants. But deacon also, but the deacon is that servant that can be a free man. He's like an employee. And he can go back and forth. He has freedom. has this kind of freedom. But there is another word which is Tula. Tula is a servant. He's the one that is permanently in servitude. This one cannot leave. The deacon can sometimes leave, but the Dulus know he has to stay in the house. Subject to his master. But the word here is not even deacon or Dulus. It's the Rui Peretis. Oh, Jesus, this is difficult. Because it is the one, the slave, that stays on the galley, on the basement of the ship, uh, where the master was saying, oh, what the, what the drums saying, they, they were rowing. You've seen this in movies. And they had shackles on their, on their feet, on the, a piece of wood that was in a horizontal way there. They could not leave. Their place was permanently there at the bottom of the ship, in the basement of the of the ship. And so, being a pastor, the, Paul used this expression: not a deacon that can come and go, go away, or a servant that had to remain permanently in the house. No, pastors, where repetitive, we need to be all the way down there. We can not go to the top of the ship and uh, wander around. No, our place is down there. So this is a position of extreme humbleness. The glory is, uh, is God's. The dungeons of, of the ship speakers of our intimacy with the Lord is the uh, early dawn dungeons, of the fasting of the tears. The t is that many times we don't understand. We have to suffer silent. So our place as pastor is all the way down there. We don't have this right. Who stays at the top of the ship? It's the Lord Jesus. He is the commander. He's the captain. 
but we're sure that we're going to come to a safe shore, safe port, which is eternal with the Lord. So the one who desires to be pastor, the Lord has spoken in the youth meeting. The Lord was raising lives for this. The Lord also said in the service yesterday that he's raising lives for this. Youth, men, valiant men to be pastors. Pray for this. It's not a shame. Lord, I want to be a pastor. I want to go through this. I want to give myself in your, into your hands so you can use me. And may the, in the name of the Lord be glorified in, in, in everything. Let us sing a song. church will stand up. We're going to pray for the children, intermediary, adolescents. Glory to God. One of the deacons can pray. We will pray at this moment for the power of the blood of Jesus, for the life of our children, children, intermediary, and adolescents. Lord, preserve them from the world from the desires and from the pride of the world, what the world trying to influence, influence the schools and the media. May the blood of Jesus has power. Give them physical and spiritual health. Bless their, their formation of their personality and their character, that they may have a mind of Christ. Bless the work of your servants so that may absorb all the teachings that are brought, we pray, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we ask that you may receive our service, our adoration to your name. And we ask a blessing for the remainder of the day, so that you may give us good meetings, and that we may be able to evangelize, and that we may be able to pray for those that are being a target of our uh, prayers, our relatives, neighbors, friends, give us authority, Lord, to invite them, and that the service tonight may 
bring salvation, that life may, lives may surrender to your feet, Lord. Is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. If anyone desire prayer and assistance, we are here at your disposal. I'd like to remind you, the church is praying for the seminar that we're going to have this coming Sunday, the state of Connecticut. So the brethren will be praying for the trip, for the pastors. A few brethren are going to go on a trip as well, a few by car and a few by plane, so that this event may be a landmark on that state, on that region. Amen? That's it, right? And I say peace of the Lord to everyone.